Hey, heroes. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into what if Deku was in Wednesday part 2. Brace yourselves for epic scenarios. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Plus, check out our second channel, Snuggy Dude, link in the description, for more awesome content. Your support means everything. Let's jump into the madness, let's go. We see Izuku walking calmly through the school hallways. Izuku, still haven't found anything, this is getting annoying. In, relax, ninth, you'll soon find a clue or something to guide us back. Nana, exactly, what we need is time, so relax and investigate calmly. Daigoro, although I don't understand why you started looking at plant books? Izuku, I was searching for those symbols on Enid's laptop, but as you know, I didn't find anything. Besides, I'm going to return the laptop since she lent it to me. Nana, and I suggested looking at types of plants. Daigoro, and why? Nana, to relax, I used to do that when I was a bit stressed, I like knowing what they did. Izuku, honestly, it did help me a bit, but those are details. He thought, and then heard a noise. Huh? Izuku looked in the direction and found a boy who, upon seeing him, opened his eyes wide like the carriers. Yuichi, he. Haikage, wasn't. Izuku, dead? He said surprised while looking at the boy in front of the principal's door, although there was also another lady in a police uniform. He's in the principal's office. But how is he alive? I saw him lifeless and practically a corpse, he was too injured to survive, but now he looks fine. He thought amazed. Nana, something is wrong in this academy. Daigoro, you're just realizing that? He said jokingly. Nana, you didn't notice either, did you? Daigoro, Nana, that's what I thought. Izuku just sighed and continued on, but when he passed by, the door opened, and he saw the sheriff and Merlina. She saw him, and then the door was closed. Izuku continued his way. Yoichi, ninth. Investigate what's going on and maybe you'll find something we're looking for. Izuku, sigh either way, I was going to investigate this. In a few minutes, Izuku arrived, knocked on the door, and Enid opened it, welcoming Izuku with a hug, which he reciprocated. Izuku, I came to return it to you. He said, handing her the laptop. Thank you so much, Enid, I really owe you a lot for helping me, hea hey. He said a bit nervously. Enid, relax, I like helping, especially if it's you, Izuku. She said with a smile. It's been several days since the festival ended, and since then, I've gotten along much better with Izuku. She thought happily. If you want, you can come in. Izuku, no thanks, just came too. He couldn't finish because Enid grabbed him and pushed him into the dorm. Enid, and how is it? She said as Izuku looked around the dorm. Izuku, MNNNN, it's nice. Let me guess, the dark part that seems to have been here for centuries is Merlina's, and the colorful part is yours, right? He said jokingly, but then, on Merlina's bed, he saw the teddy bear she gave him, making him smile. Enid, how do you guess? She said teasingly. Izuku, intuition. He said also playing along, and Enid just laughed a bit. I've never entered your dorm since you always lent me the laptop, and I used it for my dorm. He said while looking at the corners of the dorm. It's very peculiar to see. Enid, true, because when you said you needed something to investigate, I didn't hesitate and gave you my laptop. Izuku, still grateful for that. Enid, relax, I really like you. Izuku, I really like you too, Enid. I'm glad you're my friend. He said with a smile. Enid, friend. She said blankly. Izuku, what's wrong? Enid, and nothing, just glad to be your friend, Izuku. She said with a smile. I'll try not to be like this. She thought determinedly. Izuku, are you sure? Enid, you always care about me. Relax, I'm fine. Izuku, alright, but if anything happens, let me know. He said, putting a smile on Enid's face. Enid, by the way, I wanted to tell you that if you're interested, some friends and I are designing a canoe. Izuku, designing? A canoe? Enid, yes, there's a game coming up that I want to win. It's my life goal. For now. She said with a smile. Izuku had a sweat drop. Izuku, yes sure, I can help. No problem. Enid then gave Izuku a hug. Enid, thank you so much. Izuku just gave a smile. Enid, if you want, you can stay a few more minutes to chat. Izuku, um, sure, why not? He said and then saw something peculiar, a hand passing by. Was that a hand? 
he said a bit amazed. Enid, what? Izuku, I saw a hand pass by your bed. He said pointing under her bed. Enid, oh. If I tell you, won't you think I'm crazy? Izuku, of course not. Enid, that hand is called fingers. She said, and then a hand came out from under the bed, astonishing Izuku. Everyone, that thing is not normal. Izuku, wow. He said, and then the hand started making signals. Nice to meet you? It's also a pleasure, fingers. My name is Izuku. He said with a smile. I don't know, but I think Shigaraki, when he sees this, will want one. He thought comically. Enid, wait, you understand it? Izuku, sure, he speaks in sign language, and I understand that. Enid, what kind of teacher did you have? Izuku, a very good one. He said, recalling learning sign language just in case they have a mission to follow someone. Fingers touched Izuku's leg. Izuku, I like you too. He said, gently grabbing it. It's gross, but also impressive. He said, and then fingers flipped him off. Enid, according to what Merlina told me, it's sensitive. Izuku, oh, sorry fingers. He said regretfully for calling it gross. Enid, aren't you disgusted or scared to touch it? Izuku, let's say I've seen worse things. He said, and Enid didn't want to ask more. Izuku started playing with fingers. Izuku, rock, paper, scissors. He said and lost to fingers. Then they played again, and this time Izuku won, again, and fingers won, again, and Izuku won, decisively, rock, paper, or scissors. He said, and this time Izuku won, fingers gave some small taps on the floor, while Izuku just laughed. Enid, Izuku is really peculiar. She thought while laughing at the scene. It looks fun, I want to play too. Minutes later. We see Izuku leaving the dorm. Izuku, hiya hey, did that really happen? Enid, yes, you had to see it. She said with a smile. By the way, later is when we'll start designing the canoe, so come here around 2 p.m., and we'll leave from here. She said, and Izuku nodded. Take care. Izuku, they take care of me too. He said with a smile and started to leave. Daigoro, you already have someone looking out for you, Noveno. Izuku, Enid? She's a great friend. N, he wasn't talking about that, she's attracted to you. Izuku, oh. I see, but I doubt it, maybe she's just being friendly. He thought calmly as he walked. Daigoro, yes, of course. Izuku, besides, it's too soon, right? I mean, it's been almost two weeks since I arrived, it's too early to say whether she likes me or not. Haikage, whatever you say, Noveno. Yoichi, by the way, anything about that creature? Izuku, nothing, found nothing, just researched a bit and found numerous disappearances of civilians. I think those are its victims since they're always attacked in the forest, and some are found dismembered. He thought a bit annoyed at what the creature does. Yoichi, relax, you have ideas to unwind, also to train and investigate, so calm down, don't stress as it won't lead to anything. Izuku, I know, I know, you always tell me that. He said with a smile. Some passing students were confused as they heard him talking to himself. Izuku, oops. He realized and hurried his pace. Hours later. We see Izuku in another outfit Enid gave him. The green-haired guy was painting the canoe with some people, and Enid was cheering him on and sometimes helping to paint. Izuku, so, tell me about the game you're planning? Enid, it's called the Po Cup. Like I said, it's my only reason for living right now. She said very excited. Izuku, oh, and what's the Po Cup? Is it the game? Is it like a sports festival or something? Enid, I don't know what you're referring to but I think not. It's part canoe race, part pursuit, and no rules. She said with a smile. Daigoro, I like it. Can we participate? I want to join. It sounds very interesting. Nana, same here. Izuku, Sai it seems like you're excited, and no rules? Enid, yes, no rules. Each dormitory chooses to read Edgar Allan Poe for inspiration. Izuku, can I participate? Enid, it can't be, are you interested? Izuku, sure, it sounds fun. Enid, I'm glad it is for you. And, of course, you can participate, but I thought you wouldn't like it and just cheer from the sidelines. Izuku finished painting the canoe. Izuku, I actually like things like this. He said with a smile as he looked at how it turned out. Not bad. He thought and said, by the way, 
Thanks for the clothes, Enid. He said with a smile. Enid, you're welcome, if you want anything else, let me know. She said, looking at how the others were doing. Come on, ladies. Let's perfect those teeth. Angrier. This kitty won't beat around the bush. Nana, I like her attitude. Izuku, she's really into it. Enid, if Bianca Barkley wins again this year, I'll literally gouge my eyes out. Merlina, I'd pay a lot to see that. Izuku, where did you come from? Merlina, didn't you see me coming? Izuku, let's say I got lost in my thoughts. He said while continuing to paint the canoe. I still need a few more things, she'll paint the other part of the teeth, so I'll do the rest. Enid, Merlina. I'm glad you didn't leave. She said with a smile. They started chatting while Izuku sank into his thoughts. Daigoro, we're going to win. Izuku, and that sport spirit? Daigoro, I always had it. Izuku, even though it's without rules, that means they can use weapons or their abilities. Daigoro, so. Izuku, that's right, but I'll make sure no one sees, I don't want them to find out I have quirks or whatever they call it. He thought while painting. Nana, isn't that dangerous? Maybe, just kidding, go for IT. Hikage, besides, it's good because you won't get rusty, you have to train or at least use your quirks to stay in shape. Izuku just smiled as he continued with his task, it's going to be interesting for the green-haired guy. We see Izuku with Merlina in the academy courtyard while reading a paper. Merlina, what do you think? Izuku, what do I think about this? Merlina, yes. She said, and when Izuku was about to say something, he was interrupted. It's annoying, I know. You don't even have to say it. Izuku, so how do I express my opinion? He thought comically. Merlina, sighs now I have to join a club. Izuku, although I don't think it's that bothersome. He said with a chibi face. Merlina, by the way, the principal told me that you also have to join a club, and you have to join before the day ends. Izuku, so, it applies to me too. He said while looking at the paper. Hmm, some clubs sound interesting. Merlina, obviously, right? You're a student at this academy. Izuku, yes, he he he. He said a bit nervously. By the way, where have you been lately? Merlina, why do you want to know? Izuku, just curiosity, since I haven't seen you recently. Merlina, let's say I'm investigating something. Izuku, and I can't know about that something, right? Merlina looked at him. Izuku, I'll take that as a yes. He said with a smile. Merlina, by the way, weren't you helping Enid with the canoe? Izuku, yes, but Enid told me to take a break. Merlina, well, Izuku did almost everything, they would just be giving details. She thought and said. I understand. And Dedos told me you've already met him. Izuku, oh, yes, I liked him. Merlina, he also said he liked you. Izuku just chuckled a bit. Merlina, by the way, I've seen you a lot in the library lately. Izuku, let's say I read a lot, I like it. Merlina, then you can read my novel. Izuku, you write a novel? He said surprised, and she nodded. Can I read it? Merlina, so much excitement, and obviously, yes, that's why I'm telling you. Izuku, sorry, I like things like that, and if you're writing it, it's related to society, assassins, or something like that. Merlina, hmm, something like that. She said, and Izuku gave a smile. By the way, how do you know when you're interested in someone? She said, with a disgusted expression at the end. Izuku, interested? Did you mean how to know if you like someone? He said, and she nodded. Well, I think it's when you feel something different than with others, and that person is the only one who makes you feel good. It's complicated to explain. Merlina, are you saying that it's different from others? I mean, a quiet person talks a lot with another person, not only that but laughs and such? Izuku, well, yes, you could say that. Merlina, Izuku. She said, and he looked at her. You don't displease me. She said, and he got confused. Izuku, is that okay? Nana, it can't be. She said, putting her hand on her face. Yoichi, wait, did he mean that? He said, and Nana nodded. How did he not notice? Nana, I don't know. Youth? Merlina, didn't understand. She thought and sighed. I'm not good at this. I'm interested in Izuku, in both ways. Izuku continued talking with Merlina, but then a certain person arrived, not alone, but with a group? 
You must leave, as we are going to teach. Said with a smile. Merlina, oh, hello Bianca. Said coldly. Bianca, hi, Merlina, and hi, Izuku. Said the latter with a flirtatious voice. Izuku, hi, Bianca. Said with a smile, ignoring the flirtatious part. Merlina, without a doubt, every day I see Izuku getting weirder. I like it. But at the same time, this feeling disgusts me. Izuku, sorry if we're bothering, Merlina, let's go somewhere else to not disturb. Said, and she just nodded. As they started to leave, Bianca grabbed Izuku's arm as he walked past her. Bianca, we can talk from time to time, of course, if you don't mind. Said with a smile while letting go of Izuku. And that paper you have in your hand indicates that you're looking for a club. If you want, you can join us. When Izuku was about to respond, Merlina grabbed his hand and started to pull him away. Izuku was about to answer, but Merlina glanced at him, and he fell silent, following their path while Bianca looked at them with annoyance and interest. Merlina, she wants to be six feet under. Thought with annoyance. Merlina, it's been almost two weeks since Izuku arrived. At first, I thought he would just help me, but it's strange. I feel different when I'm with him, even if it doesn't show. I change when I'm with him. Maybe it's just interest or those cheesy feelings. Minutes later. We see Izuku walking through the school hallways. Izuku, hmm, I have to find a club. Thought while looking at the paper. Merlina said she wanted to look for her club alone. Said, and then started to look around. So, I'm alone looking for a club. In her voice, relax, Noveno, you'll soon find a suitable club for you. Izuku, you're right. Said with a smile. Almost the whole day passed with Izuku exploring each club, each one interesting in its own way, making it hard for Izuku to decide. He sighed, went to the director to ask for more time, and after some hesitation, she agreed. But he has three days to decide because he must join a club. He nodded. Then he checked the time and realized he was a bit late for his plant class. Nana, my favorite class. Said a bit excited. Izuku hastened his pace and arrived. He sighed, and as he was about to enter, he overheard someone familiar, Merlina talking to someone. He entered and saw everyone preparing for the class, and Merlina was talking to someone who seemed to be a carnivorous plant, but Izuku looked closer, and it was Fingers. He discreetly passed by Merlina and confirmed that it was indeed Fingers hiding behind the plant. Izuku, what could they be talking about? I heard that I lost them when I followed someone. But who could it be? Enid, Izuku. She said, reaching him. Izuku, oh, hi Enid. Said with a smile, pulling himself out of his thoughts. Enid, I would ask you to sit next to me, but someone is already sitting there. Izuku, don't worry. Said, and then saw Ajax with an empty seat next to him. See? My partner has an unoccupied seat next to him. Said with a smile. Enid, but it's Ajax. Izuku, so what? Enid, well, I've noticed that he's been treating you very strangely. She said while glancing at Ajax. I don't know what's wrong with him, but he's been acting in a way I don't like. She thought a bit angrily. Izuku, I know he's more curt when he's with me, but I want to be his friend without any issues. Said with a smile. Ajax, what are Izuku and Enid talking about? Thought with annoyance. Enid just sighed. Enid, I really like how you are. She said in a whisper. Izuku, huh? He said, and Enid blushed and looked nervous. Enid, th that we look good together, and the canoe is already finished. We just need a few details to make it even more perfect. She said, then quickly went to her seat, leaving Izuku with a chibi face. Izuku went to where Ajax was. Izuku, you have an empty seat, partner. Said with a smile. Ajax, I know. Said curtly. Daigoro, grab me, I'll kill him. Izuku just sighed. Izuku, can I sit there? Ajax glanced at Enid, noticing that she was looking at him with an accepting expression. He sighed. Ajax, sure. Said, and the green-haired one with a smile sat next to him. But don't bother me. Izuku, I make no promises. Said with a smile. Some who saw that were amazed since Ajax had never behaved like this, he only acts like that when Izuku is close. Enid, Ajax. You're my friend, but if you make Izuku sad, you'll have to deal with me. She thought a bit seriously. Izuku started talking to Ajax, or rather, talking to himself since Ajax was ignoring him. Izuku, hmm, by the way, are you a gorgon? You have snakes on your head instead of hair. He said, and Ajax just sighed. Ajax, yes. If you want, 
you can see the snakes. Izuku, really? Ajax, of course. Izuku, but don't they turn people into stone when they see them? Do I need to use special glasses or something? Ajax, no, you know? Forget it. Said, but Izuku noticed that he had a smile. Izuku, why don't you like me? Ajax, huh? Izuku, you know, I've noticed that you treat others well, at least you talk to them, and with me, you're more curt. You know? I want to be your friend. Said a bit sadly. Enid glanced at our green-haired friend, noticing that he looked a bit sad, making Enid put on a serious expression. Meanwhile, Merlina was being bothered by Bianca, although she ignored her. Enid noticed how Izuku was and looked at Ajax with a cold gaze. Ajax, sighs it's just that. I envy you. He said, and Izuku looked at him. Izuku, envy? Ajax, I ignore it. Izuku, if you want, you can tell me what bothers you later. I don't want any issues between us since we're sharing a dorm, and since I arrived here, it's been uncomfortable for both you and me, so. Friends? Said with a smile. Ajax looked at that for a second and smiled a bit. Ajax, I'll try. Said, giving a smile to the green-haired one. Then the teacher arrived and started explaining about plants, although she introduced Merlina and the green-haired guy. The classes were normal, although Bianca and Merlina were serious and answered the teacher's questions quickly and confidently, making everyone sweat a bit. Izuku answered from time to time, earning a smile from Bianca, Enid, and Merlina, although the latter's smile was small and barely noticeable. The teacher was increasingly surprised by the green-haired one, while his classmates only murmured about him, causing the green-haired one to have a chibi face. When the classes ended, Izuku quickly went to the library since he practically spent his time there after the last class of the day. Hours later. Now we see Izuku leaving the library, but it was evident that he had a depressive aura. Izuku, still nothing. Is this for real? I'm not getting anywhere. Nana, although you rushed when the plant class ended. Izuku nervously laughed at that, but then he heard someone crying. He saw Enid passing by quickly, covering her face with her hands. Izuku grabbed her arm but gently. Izuku, what happened? Did someone do something to you? Are you okay? He asked, concerned and a bit angry if someone hurt her. Enid, I'm fine, Izuku. She said while covering herself with her other arm so he couldn't see and struggling to be let go. Izuku, Enid, please, what happened? Enid, I I told you I'm fine. She couldn't finish because Izuku pulled her towards him and gave her a hug. Izuku. Izuku, I if you can't tell me, at least you can vent with me. He said, squeezing the hug a bit more but carefully. For Enid, the hug was warm, and she continued crying. Enid, it almost gave me a heart attack. She said while resting on his chest. Izuku, what? What happened? He said seriously. Enid, Yoko is in the infirmary. An incident at dinner caused a severe allergic reaction and she won't be able to go to the Po Cup, and now we don't have a co-pilot. Izuku, calm down. He said, caressing her to calm her down. I don't like seeing you cry, I prefer it when you smile. He said with a smile, and she separated from the hug while wiping her tears. Enid, I don't know what happened, but I feel like someone gave her something at that dinner to cause that reaction in Yoko. She said, now calm her. Izuku, you calm down. Maybe Merlina will join us, and we'll win, you'll see he said, trying to cheer her up. Enid, do you think so? Izuku, I don't think. He said, and she lowered her head a bit. I know we'll win, so cheer up. He said with a big smile. Enid looked at him with surprise and a slight blush. Enid, I Izuku. Izuku, you go to your dorm, it's already late. Get ready since tomorrow is the poke up, and everything will go very well. Enid, why you're right. She said, and Izuku gave a smile. Izuku, I also prepared for tomorrow, so good night. He said and started to leave. Enid, Izuku. Thanks for cheering me up, although I hope my roomie agrees. She thought while watching Izuku leave and then headed to her dorm. Izuku walked with a thought on his mind. Izuku, we'll win, and I'll make the one responsible for making Enid cry pay. Thought seriously. We see Izuku walking from one place to another in his dormitory while Ajax looks at him with doubt. Ajax, what's up? Izuku, huh? Just thinking about something. It's strange that you're asking. He said with a smile. Ajax, it's just annoying to see someone walking like that. He said with a smirk. Izuku, haha, so everything's okay then? Ajax, I'm still thinking about it, and sorry for treating you like that all this time. 
Izuku, no worries. But if one day you feel confident enough to tell me why you're envious of me, let me know. He said, and Ajax just sighed. Ajax, besides, I'm not the only one envious of you. He said and started getting ready to sleep. Izuku, huh? And who? Ajax, just go to sleep. He said, and Izuku just sighed, went to his bed, and lay down. Rest. He said and started sleeping. Izuku just smiled. Izuku, rest well too. He said and fell asleep. Next day. We see Izuku sleeping peacefully, but then he feels someone waking him up. He opened his eyes a bit and noticed the person responsible. Izuku, fingers? He said as he slowly got up. Fingers just handed him a paper and quickly left, bidding farewell with a love and peace pose. Izuku did the same and left. Izuku, what could this be? He said and started to open it. Sabotage was Bianca, if you're with us in the Po Cup, you have to know she was responsible for Yoko not participating. He said, and each word sounded more serious. Izuku clenched the letter, trying to stay calm. Izuku, this could have gone wrong for Yoko, she could have died if she ate too much, and because of that, she made Enid cry. He thought with anger. Nana, we're going to destroy her. Daigoro, I agree with the seventh. N, let's win. Izuku looked to the other side of the dorm and noticed his roommate was not there. Izuku, he must have gone to prepare for the Po Cup. He said seriously. I have to do the same. He said and started to get ready before leaving. Izuku, the letter was written by Merlina. Haikage, why do you say that? Izuku, because she said it directly and got to the point. Haikage, well, knowing her well, you have a good point. Izuku then went to the courtyard, not finding anyone. He searched all over the academy. Izuku, I knew I should have told her where the Po Cup would be. He thought with annoyance. The green-haired boy walked through the academy's hallways and passed by a window. He saw Merlina and Enid talking outside. Izuku, finally found them. He thought and looked around, making sure no one saw him, then took advantage and jumped through the window. He activated the floating quirk and descended carefully towards the ground, activating it at the last second to avoid a hard landing. Izuku landed behind some bushes, emerged from them, and quickly headed towards Enid and Merlina. Izuku, hey! He said and was received with a hug from Enid, which he reciprocated. Enid, I thought you wouldn't come. Izuku, sorry, saw a black cat, had to take the long way. He said, and Enid looked at him seriously, as did Merlina. Okay, I got lost and walked for almost half an hour around the whole academy. Merlina, Enid, you should have given him the directions. Enid, I forgot, sorry Izuku. Izuku, it's okay, Enid, my fault for not asking where it would be. He said with a smile. Enid, be but. She was interrupted. Izuku, but nothing. He said, giving her head pats. Enid, w well. She said, enjoying the head pats. Merlina approached him and whispered. Merlina, did it get to you? Izuku just nodded a bit seriously. Enid, huh? Merlina slash Izuku, nothing. Enid, whatever, let's go. She said and started walking. Izuku, she's really excited. Merlina, yes, and now I want to beat Bianca at her own game. Izuku, tell me everything on the way. He said, and she nodded. On the way, Enid was ahead because she was excited, while Merlina and Izuku followed behind, chatting. Izuku, well, then, Bianca really does all that to win. Merlina, after all, there are no rules. Izuku, sighs but will win. Merlina, that's for sure. Izuku just laughed a bit. Izuku, Bianca. I'm not resentful, but why did you do that to Yoko and make Enid cry? He thought with anger. Izuku felt someone touch his shoulder. Merlina, relax, I know you're very kind, and that's why this must anger you even more, right? Izuku, yes. Merlina, then you should stay calm because we're going to beat her at her own game. Izuku looked at that and gave a smile, but then he noticed Merlina smiling a bit. Izuku, nice smile. He said unconsciously. Merlina, if you say something like that again, I'll knock you out in the canoe. She said seriously. MNNNN. Nice. Izuku just laughed, making Merlina even more annoyed. Izuku, thanks. He said, surprising her. Thanks for cheering me up. In your own way. He said with a smile. Merlina, don't, thank me. She said and quickened her pace. Let's go, and don't lag behind. Izuku, sure. 
he said and hurried his pace. The green-haired boy didn't notice that when Merlina quickened her pace, it was to hide her slight blush. Enid, that's right. She said and stopped. Merlina, what's wrong? Izuku, something happened? Enid, I forgot to tell her that the costume is already at the store. She said with a smile. Merlina slash Izuku, huh? Minutes later. We see Merlina coming out of the dressing room in a cat costume. Enid, oh my god. You look perfect, incredible. She said and then noticed something. But something's missing, where are your whiskers? Merlina looked at her coldly. Merlina, ask that again, and you'll end up with eight lives less. She said, bringing a smile to Enid. Enid, you're really funny. Merlina, Izuku is missing. Enid, I can't wait to see him. With Izuku. We see Izuku in the cat costume, still in the dressing room. Izuku, then. Why can't I come out? Daigoro, because it's embarrassing. Izuku, you wanted me to participate, and I don't think I look that bad. Daigoro, then why did you listen to me in the first place? Izuku, anyway, I would have participated. He said seriously, remembering something. Nana, don't mind him, Izuku, you look very adorable. Yoichi, I don't care. Haikage, confirmed. N, indeed. Leader, no doubt. Izuku started to come out. Izuku, I don't look bad either. He thought, and when he came out, everyone looked at him. Or do I? Izuku walked uncomfortably due to the stares he received. He then saw Merlina and Enid, starting to walk towards them. Izuku, ready. He said, and the two girls looked at him. Imagine he has a black costume, V, imagine he has a black costume, V Merlina, finally arrived. She couldn't finish seeing him well. Enid, finally, I want to. She also couldn't finish. Izuku, do I really look that bad? He said somewhat depressed. Enid, you look very adorable. She said, hugging the green-haired boy. You look very good, very cute, Izuku. She said blushing. Merlina had a slight blush, not because she saw him that way, but she felt that if she teased him, he would either tear off an arm or simply knock you out and leave you to your fate. Enid, even Merlina agrees. Merlina, shut up. Izuku looked at the girls closely. Izuku, by the way. He said, and they looked at him. You look very cute, it suits you. He said with a smile and a slight blush. Enid, I Izuku, you didn't have to make that compliment. She said blushing. Merlina looked at him seriously, even though she liked it a bit, generating both disgust and attraction at the same time. Izuku just laughed. The green-haired boy didn't notice that the looks he received weren't because the costume looked bad, but quite the opposite. Even the guys were bothered because he stole the attention of the girls, and they had to admit, he looked very adorable. Then, a trumpet-like sound was heard. Enid, that's the signal. Merlina, but, Enid, can you let go of Izuku? She said while looking at Enid, who was hugging the green-haired boy's arm. Enid let go of Izuku's arm with a pout. Izuku, come on, Enid said it's the signal. He said and started walking to the canoe, followed by Merlina and Enid. Let's win. He said excited. Enid just gave a smile, while Merlina's was only brief but disappeared quickly. Minutes later. We see a crowd gathered while there were four canoes. Izuku was behind his team, although Enid looked at him from time to time. Merlina, concentrate, Enid. She said seriously. Enid, yes, yes. She said and looked ahead. Izuku, now that I think about it, we look like the pussycats. He thought comically. On the opposing side, they observed the cat team, but one in particular was against Izuku by the men. Bianca, it's about to start. She said with a smile, noticing a look. Izuku, if you want, after I win, let's talk. She said, winking at the green-haired guy. Izuku looked at her with anger, though he could hide it well, but when he was about to reply. Merlina, he won't pay attention to you, Bianca. She said coldly. Bianca, oh, look who we have here, the runt of the litter. Merlina, just so you know, I don't think I'm better than anyone else. She said, leaving Bianca stunned. I'm just better than you. She said, angering Bianca. Then the director's voice sounded, and she began to introduce the Edgar Allan Poe Cup competition, or simply, the Poe Cup. She also explained the rules, and the winner could boast for a year and enjoy special privileges. Izuku, so, really no rules. He thought while listening to the director. We just have to go and get the flag and come back with it, winning. 
Sounds interesting, can't wait to start, he thought excitedly, noticing fingers. So, Merlina has a plan, sorry, but I'll do it my way. Madam, let the poke up begin. She said with a gun in hand, pointing it at the sky and firing, indicating that it had started. Izuku began to paddle with his team, while the opposing team didn't lag behind and paddled as best as they could. After a few minutes, the Joker's boat managed to overtake Izuku's team. Izuku, the Jokers are really fast. He thought and started paddling a bit faster, though he couldn't go too fast and had to stick to his team's pace. Then Izuku looked at the other enemies and noticed Bianca's canoe, realizing she was looking at a specific place. So, looking in that direction, he noticed a guy with peculiar clothing who started taking off his shirt and then jumped into the water. Izuku, wait. They are mermaids, and when they touch the water, it becomes like the images I saw. So, I have to be careful with that guy. He thought seriously. Then the canoe with a team wearing Antifa started behaving strangely, heading towards a part of the boundary and colliding with it, splitting the canoe in half. Izuku, I have to take care of him. He thought seriously. Some saw that, though they were a bit surprised, they didn't pay much attention and continued. The only ones who watched a bit more were Izuku and Merlina. Izuku kept paddling but then closed his eyes. Izuku, danger sensor. He thought and then opened his eyes. He felt a headache and understood that he was looking in a direction. He looked and noticed a fish tail before it disappeared into the water again. Izuku, I got you. He said and made sure no one saw him, preparing to launch a small attack. Ofa, full cowl, 5%. He thought and then with his fingers, he released a strong gust of wind. Izuku's canoe moved a bit due to the pressure he created, and that hit worked, creating a splash as if a big stone had been thrown into the water. They noticed the guy flying through the sky and falling back into the water. Izuku, I think I overdid it, sorry. Daigoro, you were very kind to me. No one noticed it was Izuku since his powers only appeared for one second. Everyone was in shock because they didn't expect that, especially without knowing who did it. Merlina, that attack was similar to that guy's. She thought seriously while looking around. Izuku, don't get distracted, let's go. He said, and they hurried up. He won't be a problem anymore. Under the water, we see the fishtailed guy floating and obviously knocked out. In a few minutes, they arrived, concluding the first phase. Izuku got off the canoe, followed by Merlina. Enid was about to join them. Merlina, Enid, stay here with her and make sure no one does anything suspicious to the canoe. She said seriously. Izuku, Merlina is right. He said, and she nodded. Besides, the Joker team is a bit ahead. He thought, looking at their canoe. Then Merlina and Izuku ran towards the flag, following the Joker's trail. Enid noticed fingers. Enid, fingers, I'm really glad to see you because I have something planned. She said with a smile, and fingers made a military-style sign. In a few seconds, we see fingers emerging from behind a rock. He grabs a small stone and throws it at one of the Joker team members since two were guarding the canoe. Joker 3, huh? He said, looking in the direction and noticing fingers, who showed him the middle finger. What? Joker 4, what's that? Fingers started to leave. Joker 3, I don't know, but let's catch him. The two of them started chasing him, leaving the canoe alone. Enid approached, unsheathed her claws, and got down to business. With Izuku, we see Izuku arriving with Merlina at the flag location, passing by the Jokers who already had theirs. Merlina, let's hurry up. She said, and he nodded. When they arrived, they saw their flag in front of a large door. Izuku looked at it for a few seconds while Merlina approached her flag. However, when she barely touched it, she fell unconscious, but Izuku caught her. Izuku, Merlina? He said while trying to wake her up. Merlina? He said worried, and the flag was next to her. Darn it. He began to carry her like a princess, carefully holding the flag too. Izuku, I hope she doesn't wake up until I put her down because if she sees me carrying her like this, something might happen. He thought comically. He started to leave, worried about Merlina, and on the way, he encountered Bianca. Bianca, so, sleeping beauty decided to take a nap. Izuku, at least she's beautiful. He said a bit annoyed but sighed and continued on his way. Bianca got upset and quickened her pace to catch up. Izuku reached the canoe with Merlina in his arms, barely seen by Enid, who was concerned. Enid, what happened? Izuku, I don't know, when she touched the flag, she fainted. He couldn't finish because someone spoke. Merlina, 
you have five seconds to put me down. She said, gradually waking up. Izuku quickly but carefully put her down and then gave her a hug. Merlina was about to say something but was interrupted. Izuku, I'm glad nothing happened to you. He said while tightening the hug a bit more. Merlina didn't speak but reciprocated the hug quickly. Enid, this is surprising. She said while watching Merlina reciprocate the hug. Izuku separated with a smile. Izuku, let's go on. He said and put the flag on the canoe. The others got ready and started to leave, thus ending the second phase. When they had gone a little further, they noticed Bianca's team getting ready. Enid, let's go, quickly. They began to paddle a little faster, but on the way, they noticed that the Joker team was sinking, it had a crack letting in water. Enid, I just thought, what would Merlin do? She said with a smile. Merlin looked a bit surprised, while Izuku congratulated her. Izuku, good one, Enid. He said with a smile, causing her to blush. Enid, it wasn't a big deal. They continued with their business, but noticed that Bianca was getting closer. They paddled faster, but Bianca still caught up. Enid, oh no. Izuku made sure no one saw him and then put his hand in the water. He began to concentrate, and black whips emerged, swiftly heading towards Bianca's canoe. No one saw it as it was underwater, although Izuku struggled because using the black whips underwater was challenging due to water pressure counteracting their speed. It's like hitting underwater, it reduces damage, but he tried to make it work. Bianca and her team were smiling, thinking they were about to win, but suddenly their boat jerked. They held on and noticed a large crack, letting water into the canoe. Izuku and his team passed by them, once again taking the lead. Merlin, in the end, we didn't use the tools the canoe had. They arrived, and the crowd applauded and cheered excitedly. They quickly got off the canoe, Enid holding the flag, and ran towards the crowd, winning the Po Cup. Izuku looked back and saw Bianca and her team struggling. Izuku, never mess with Enid or anyone I care about. He thought seriously. Hours later. We see Izuku in the academy courtyard, and it's night time. Izuku, what a day. He said while stretching. Daigoro, it was so exciting. Nana, but I hope no one saw any quirks. Yoichi, I doubt it, he used it for less than a second, and the black whips, no one saw them. N, although I was surprised he could use them underwater. Izuku, but it's challenging. Haikage, but the important thing is that you won. Izuku, we won, thanks to everyone, not just me. He said, looking at the stars. Daigoro, aren't you supposed to be sleeping? Izuku, honestly, I come here sometimes to look at the stars. He said calmly. I wonder what those privileges are? Nana, I don't know, but we'll find out later. Daigoro, who has the trophy? Izuku, Enid has it, although she got very excited when they gave it to her, but who wouldn't? He said, recalling that a few hours ago, they received the trophy while his team celebrated, with Merlin doing her thing. Izuku just sighed, but then he heard two snaps. Izuku, huh? He said, turned carefully, noticing it was Merlin entering what seemed to be a secret room. Merlin entered, and the door began to close. Izuku quickly entered in time. To avoid being discovered, Izuku started floating so that no one would see him, blending with the ceiling as there was little light, and Izuku took advantage of that. However, it turned out to be a library. Izuku, what could this place be? I see Izuku on the roof, floating while watching Merlina grab a book and put it in her bag. Izuku, what could that be? He thought with doubt but became alert to something. When Merlina was about to leave, she got caught by some kind of cover. He was alarmed and was about to come down, but then. Yoichi, relax, Ninth, we don't have the suit since you left it in the dormitory, under your bed. Haikage, right, plus, they might recognize you. Izuku stayed still, even though he was worried. Izuku, I hope nothing happens to her, he thought, and then he saw the guy who caught her stumble but not fall. Well, I guess I worried for nothing, he thought with a sweat drop. Minutes later. We see Izuku straining to stay floating, and below him, Merlina is tied up while surrounded by a group of people. Izuku, T this is really challenging, he thought, tired and in pain. Maintaining this for almost an hour without stopping is an achievement for me, as I haven't lasted this long. Nana, although this serves as training, ninth. Izuku had a sweat drop, but it was true. He began to transcend and quickly tried to stay in the air, succeeding. Izuku sighed and continued watching and listening. Minutes later. Merlina is leaving the place but not before saying, newcomers like you, 
Kidnappings have a bad reputation, she said and left. Izuku looked at that with astonishment, although he was relieved that nothing dangerous happened. Now he prayed for them to leave so he could start descending. The group lasted a few minutes, and as the last person left, the green-haired boy began to descend, touched the ground, and started breathing heavily. Izuku, and new record. He said with a smile and lay down for a moment. I need a short break. He said, gradually recovering. Nana, congratulations, ninth. Daigoro, not bad. Yuichi, without a doubt. Izuku lasted a few seconds and stood up. Izuku, as they said, it's like a private library or something, only for the elite. He said while looking at the place with many books, then he saw a book with a brown cover that said symbols. This book makes me curious. He said and grabbed it. I don't think they'll mind if I take it for a while, I'll return it anyway. He said and started to leave. Although I'll come back from time to time to look for more things, maybe they have what I'm looking for or at least a clue, he thought with a smile. Izuku climbed the stairs and yawned. Izuku, but first, sleep. He said and left quickly because they might return at any moment. Daigoro, I wonder why you didn't use the black whips? Izuku, because there wasn't a specific place to hold on to, he thought with a sweat drop. Hours later. We see Izuku sleeping peacefully, but someone was waking him up. Ajax, Izuku. He said, and the green-haired boy quickly stood up from bed, on guard. Hey, calm down, haven't we settled our differences? Izuku, did we? He said while lowering his guard and yawning. Although I don't know how to look at him since he's a member of that elite. Ajax, I think I apologized, but it wasn't appropriate, so, sorry for acting that way since we met. Izuku, don't worry, and you don't have to apologize. Was that all just to wake me up? Ajax, actually, we also have to go to the academy's courtyard. Izuku, for what? He said while changing into his uniform. Ajax, well, they're going to give us letters to see what activity we got. Izuku, activity? Ajax, we'll talk on the way. Izuku, fine with me. Izuku took a few seconds to finish changing, then they left the dormitory and started walking to the courtyard. On the way, Ajax told him about the activities. Izuku, so, that's it. He said, and Ajax nodded. Hmm, this seems a bit like internships, he thought with doubt. They arrived, and all the students were in the courtyard. Some already had their letters, while others were waiting to receive them. Izuku noticed Enid and Merlina, who had already received their letters. He was about to talk to them after getting his letter, but Merlina noticed the green-haired boy. Merlina, Izuku, you're here. She said, and Enid quickly looked around. Enid, where? She said excitedly. Merlina, you're very excited. Enid, yes. No one knows if I got the same activity as Izuku, and if I did, I'll finally tell him. Merlina, don't tell me that. She was interrupted. Enid, I'll ask him out. She said excitedly and blushing. Merlina looked at that coldly. Merlina, I don't think he'll agree to go on a date with you. Enid, why do you think that? She said a little sad about it. Merlina, because I say so. She said seriously. Why does this bother me so much? I really hate all this nonsense. Enid, you're so mean. She said while pouting. I say he would accept. Merlina, why do you say that? Enid, because I've known him all this time he's been here, and he knows me well. Maybe he'll accept the date and go. Merlina, you still have to see if you're in the same activity. She said and looked at her letter. Then, a green-haired guy appeared. Izuku, girls. I got assigned to a store, I think. He said excitedly. Nana, he doesn't even know exactly what he got, and he's already excited. She said with a sweat drop. Merlina took the green-haired boy's letter and examined it along with Enid. Merlina slash Enid, the heap of giants. Izuku slash Merlina, what is that? Slash I got the same. They said, and Izuku had a sweat drop. Enid, darn it. She said, dejected. I got the pilgrim's world. Merlina, don't you get along with people and love acting? Enid, whatever. She said, pouting a little. Izuku, it's some weird and horrible antique store. Izuku, don't say that, Enid, maybe it's interesting. Then, he heard someone calling him. Izuku looked and noticed it was his teammate. Izuku, Ajax? He thought and said. Excuse me, I have something to attend to. He said and left, leaving Merlina and Enid alone. Merlina just gave a smile to Enid. Enid, 
I thought I'd be excited to see you smile, but it's not like that. She said seriously while looking at Merlina. Merlina, well, I propose something. She said and then looked at fingers on a column, not wanting to be discovered, making signs. I'll give you my letter in exchange for yours. Enid, wait, really? Merlina, of course, take it before I change my mind. She said, and they exchanged letters. Enid, yes. She said excitedly. And what did Fingers say to Merlina? Well, what signs? Let's go with Izuku a few seconds earlier. We see Izuku arriving where Ajax is. Izuku, what's up? Ajax, can you do me a favor? He said, getting straight to the point. Izuku, sure? He said a little confused. Ajax, thanks, and it's just if you can give me your letter. Izuku, wait, what? Why, or for what? Ajax, it's just that I saw you got something not many people got, although I wish Enid were with me. Izuku, but she's going to the Pilgrim's world. Ajax, me too. Izuku, then why do you want my letter if you're going where she is? He said with a chibi face. Ajax, it's just that I don't like interacting with people so much, and acting, I prefer something quieter or at least with fewer people. He said, and Izuku looked at him comically. I know it's silly, but even though I like being with Enid, I won't risk a mistake, and bam, cap off, and everything falls apart. Izuku, sigh relax, I understand, so here you go. He said and gave him his letter. Pilgrim's world, huh? He said as he looked at his letter. The green-haired boy didn't notice that Fingers saw that and went to inform Merlina. Merlina, I also took the opportunity to investigate and to be cautious, Izuku's help doesn't bother me. This day will be interesting for the green-haired boy. We see all the students from the Never Again Academy on bleachers located in the town of Jericho. The mayor gives a speech, and then the director instructs them to do their activities and return by morning. Now we see Izuku walking through the streets of the town, not alone, but with Enid and Merlina. Enid, I hope you have a good time, Merlina. She said, holding Izuku's hand, let's go, Izuku. Izuku, huh? Enid, to a Ria store. Izuku, but I was going to the Pilgrim World. He said with a chibi face Enid, what? She said in confusion. Izuku, but don't worry, Ajax will also go. He said with a smile. Enid looked at Merlina, who just shrugged. Enid, be but. She couldn't finish as Merlina approached and took Izuku's hand, starting to go to do their activity. Merlina, I hope you have a good time, Enid. She said while walking with Izuku, although she let go of his hand. Enid just looked at Izuku leaving with Merlina for the Pilgrim World. Enid, but I wanted to be with Izuku. She said, feeling down, and started to leave. With Izuku. We see Izuku arriving at the Pilgrim World with Merlina, it seemed based on a while ago. Someone called him. Eugene, Merlina. Do you want to take a group photo? He said with a smile. Merlina just looked at him. Eugene, I guess that's a no. He said and then looked at Izuku. Hi. My name is Eugene. Izuku, nice to meet you. My name is, was interrupted. Eugene, Izuku, Izuku Midoriya. Izuku, that's right. How do you know my name? Eugene, you're popular at the Never Again Academy. Izuku, sighs I should have figured. He said with a sweat drop. By the way, do you know each other from somewhere? He asked with doubt. It's rare to see Merlina socializing. Merlina, I know him from the beekeeping club. Izuku went blank. Merlina, what's wrong? Izuku, it's just that. I forgot about the club thing, I have to join one in two days. He said alarmed. Eugene, don't worry, you still have two days. Besides, you can join my club. Izuku, thanks a lot, but I'm thinking about others. Eugene, well, okay, but the door to the crow's nest will be open. He said with a smile. Izuku, sure. He said with a smile. Then, a lady arrived. Arlene, good morning, young relatives of never again. I'm Lady Arlene, a true CO, she said, and the other students were attentive while Izuku watched with doubt. Original colonizer. She said, and Izuku's doubt disappeared. Please put your phones on vibrate and hurry. Izuku, one language with another language. He thought with a sweat drop after hearing her request about the phones. And she asked with an angry tone, not very pleasant. He thought comically. By the way, I don't have a phone. He thought with a poker face while watching some put their phones on vibrate. Arlene, I ask that because you are about to go back to the year 1625, 
the year of our Lord. Izuku, Lai, God has been there from the beginning. Arlene, to the first pilgrim settlement in Jericho. Izuku, ha, she's talking about that sir. He thought while remembering the book he read about this town. Then she started to leave but signaled them to follow her. Everyone began to walk, and in a few seconds, they reached their destination. Arlene, inside there, you'll find a collection of artifacts related to the most beloved and pious founder, Joseph Crackstone. She said with a smile. And over there is the restroom, the first gender-neutral toilet in the US. Merlina, I have a question that overwhelms me. Arlene, speak up, girl. She said a bit annoyed. Izuku, she doesn't have to talk like that. He thought with a bit of seriousness. Merlina, in Joseph Crackstone's artifact exhibit, which ones are on display? Arlene, it's a treasure of great value. There are original farm tools, dishes, and even the Crackstone family's chamber pot. Izuku, those are peculiar valuable treasures. Merlina, how fascinating. The green-haired one and I offer to work there. Izuku, did I offer? He said comically. Arlene, heavens, no, they're renovating the exhibition. Today, everyone will work in the vibrant heart of the pilgrim world. A few minutes later. We see Izuku in a pilgrim outfit in a candy store founded in 1955. Daigoro, do I tell you the truth, or do we continue being friends? Izuku, shut up. He thought with annoyance. Then, they gave the green-haired one a tray filled with candies, chocolates, and more. Arlene, deliver these to the people who arrive. Izuku just nodded, and she left. N, it's clear she doesn't like the Never Again students much. Izuku, well, it would be better to start now. He thought, and then he began with his task. After a few minutes, the green-haired one noticed Merlina offering to others. Merlina, enjoy your authentic pilgrim candy made with cocoa harvested by oppressed indigenous people from the Amazon. She said, and the green-haired one blinked several times, and people looked at Merlina strangely. The proceeds are used to maintain the pathetic cover-up of US history, besides, the candy was invented 258 years later. She said with a small smile. Anyone interested? She said, offering, but people left quickly. Izuku, hmm, I'm surprised she spoke that language well. He thought with a sweat drop. The green-haired one continued, but on the way, there were more girls his age than adults. In less than half an hour, his tray was empty. Izuku, he really likes sweets. He thought while looking at his empty tray. Nana, or maybe it's something else. Izuku, huh? Nana, forget it. She said with a playful smile. Izuku was about to leave and inform Mrs. Arlene that he had finished, but he heard a commotion. He looked in the direction and noticed that it was the same guys who had bothered him in the cafeteria, the ones he met with Tyler and especially Merlina. His expression turned serious when he realized who they were bothering. Izuku, Eugene. He said and went to help him. They were about to put Eugene in one of the humiliation instruments or other torture devices, but the green-haired one grabbed the arm of that pilgrim. Pilgrim, what's go? He couldn't finish the sentence. The other two froze. Izuku, what are you doing? He said seriously. Pilgrim 3, and nothing, just checking if this guy is okay. Izuku, then why are you trying to put him there? Pilgrim 2, darn it. We don't have to give you explanations. He said with courage. Izuku, then I don't have to give you explanations either. He said while cracking his knuckles. Pilgrim 2, I bet you only talk and are nothing. He said and tried to punch him, but Izuku quickly stopped him. Huh? He said confused and tried to punch him again, but the green-haired one put the tray in between, hitting him. D darn it. He said in pain. I'll make you pay. He couldn't finish. Izuku, get out of here. He said coldly. Pilgrim 2 fell silent due to the green-haired one's gaze, but a few seconds later, Izuku's pupils glowed with emerald green. He simply left quickly, leaving the other two. The green-haired one looked at these two. Pilgrim, I, I don't want trouble with dad he said and quickly left. Pilgrim too, I'm going with him. He said and also started to leave. They left, leaving Eugene and Izuku, although Merlina watched all that from a slightly distant place. She was a bit surprised but also a little flushed. However, she didn't pay much attention to that and approached them. Eugene, th, thanks. He said incredulous. Izuku, don't, thank me. He said and then noticed that Eugene's clothes and face were covered in vomit. Let me guess, too many sweets right? He said, and Eugene nodded, a bit embarrassed. Sigh and you didn't save any for me. He said with a smile. Let's go to a place to clean up. 
Merlina, I can help with that. She said, appearing suddenly. Eugene, I still haven't gotten used to that. Izuku, I have. He said with a chibi face. Well, more or less. A few seconds later. We see Merlina cleaning up Eugene with a handkerchief. Eugene, no one has ever defended me. He said while looking at Izuku and then at Merlina. Or helped in these situations. Merlina, bees help each other. She said while cleaning him. Izuku, if you need my help, I'll be there. He said with a smile. Hope to be back soon, comrades. Eugene, perhaps this surprises you, but I don't have friends. Merlina, you remind me of my brother, without the desire to strangle him every moment. She said while finishing cleaning him. Izuku had a sweat drop. Izuku, and Eugene, were friends, right? He said with a smile. Eugene just gave a smile at that. Merlina, now, you two follow me. I need to know more about Crackstone, we'll break into the cult store. Izuku, wait, I can't, I have something to do. He said, and Merlina looked at him. Merlina, sigh then you'll help me another time. Izuku, but still, if you're in danger, just say my name. He said with a smile. You have Eugene. Merlina just nodded and left with Eugene, although he was confused since when he agreed. Daigoro, do you have things to do? Izuku, actually, yes, I have to deliver the tray, finish this activity as soon as possible, and get to my dorm to start reading that book I found with the elite group. Daigoro just nodded. Hours later. We see Izuku leaving the pilgrim world and starting to walk through the town streets. Izuku, finally finished, just need to get to the academy and straight to my dorm. He thought with a smile. As he walked calmly, he passed by the cafeteria where Tyler worked. He stopped, gave a smile, and as he was about to leave, the cafeteria door opened. Merlina, what a coincidence, let's go. She said and grabbed Izuku's hand, starting to pull him along, she was practically dragging him. Izuku, w what's happening? And I can walk. He said, but Merlina kept pulling the green-haired one. Merlina, I'll tell you on the way. She said simply and let go of the green-haired one's hand. Izuku just sighed, and they continued walking. Minutes later. We see Izuku in front of what used to be a cabin, now burned. Izuku, uh, what are we doing here? Merlina, an investigation. She said while opening the door. I need your help in case something comes up that I can't handle, Deku. She said with a small smile. Izuku was in shock at being called that. Daigoro, we've been discovered. Merlina, you know, your silence confirms my theory. Izuku, H how d. He couldn't finish because a man appeared. Man, what are you doing here, brats? He said threateningly. Izuku, sorry, sir, but it's not a good time. He said, returning to Merlina. Although I can't talk about this with this man around. He thought with a sweat drop. Man, don't ignore me. He said, grabbing the green-haired one's shoulder. Izuku was about to do something but stopped when he saw fingers climbing on the man and starting to attack him. The man got scared and left, on the way, he managed to get rid of fingers and threw him aside. Fingers started approaching with the others. Izuku, getting back to the topic, and thanks, fingers. He said, and fingers just made a love and peace sign. How do you know about this? Daigoro, we got caught. Yoichi, well, sooner or later, he was going to find out the secret. Nana, well, you're right about that. Merlina didn't respond and started pulling something out of her bag, revealing the green-haired one's costume. Merlina, I think this is yours. Izuku, H. How? He was interrupted. Merlina, I got a little help. Izuku looked at fingers and made a sorry, she forced me to enter your dormitory sign. The green-haired one sighed and made a gesture saying not to worry. Izuku, but don't tell. He was interrupted again. Merlina, of course, I won't tell anyone. She said, giving the green-haired one a sigh of relief. In exchange, help me with something I'm investigating. Izuku, well, I knew you were going to ask for something, and what kind of investigation? Merlina, I'll tell you later. Izuku had a sweat drop. Izuku, and what are we doing here? Merlina, to look for something that happened a long time ago. I feel like all of this is leading to an unexpected turn, I usually like unexpected turns, but this is an exception. Izuku, well, at least tell me a little now about what's going on so I know what you're looking for. Merlina, I thought you were only with me to watch over and protect me. Izuku, I'm not your bodyguard. Merlina, but you like to help. Izuku, Merlina, that's what I thought. Izuku, 
they take advantage of my nobility. He said with a chibi face. Meanwhile, Izuku stood near the door with fingers on his shoulder while Merlina investigated the place. Izuku, so tell me, how did you know I'm Deku? Merlina, it was easy, honestly. She said while searching every corner of this place. Enid told me that when you had your outing, she mentioned that after distracting the white-haired girl, you didn't return promptly, and just as the monster situation was resolved and Deku appeared, you arrived where Enid was. I simply calculated the time. Izuku, oh. He said with a blank stare. Merlina, also, fingers saw you using those air punches, although he told me you dipped your hand in the water. I don't know why you did that, but after that, Bianca's canoe capsized. Izuku glanced at fingers and sighed. Izuku, I forgot fingers was there. He said with a sweat drop. Daigoro, you got carried away in the moment. Haikage, you're not the one to say that. Daigoro just got angry, activated his quirk, and started throwing punches, but his danger sense made Izuku dodge easily. Merlina, and I sent fingers to your room, finding that suit, and by the way, I forgot to give it to you. She said and handed him his suit. Izuku took his suit and looked at it for a moment. Then he took out his backpack and started putting it away. Merlina, but tell me, why did you dip your hand in the water? Are you some kind of mermaid? Izuku, what? No, no, I'm human, so to speak. I just used one of my quirks, abilities, or whatever you want to call it. Merlina, quirk? Izuku, I'll tell you about that later. He said with a smile. Merlina, sigh did you really make me feel this way? Izuku, huh? Merlina, let's go, there's nothing here. Meanwhile, fingers started making signals. Merlina, my visions are as random as a serial killer. Izuku, visions? Merlina, I can see visions of the future or events that happened. Izuku, it's like Sir Night Eye's quirk. He thought and said. And how does it work? Merlina, usually, I just touch something, and there you go, a vision. Izuku, have you tried touching a part of this place? Merlina touched a piece of debris, but nothing happened. She walked and picked up a piece of paper, then suddenly looked at the sky. Merlina, nothing. She said, looking back at the green-haired guy. Izuku had a sweat drop. Merlina started gathering some things and then headed out. Merlina, let's go. On the way, I'll tell you what I'm investigating. She said, touching the door to exit but suddenly collapsed, quickly caught by Izuku. Izuku, Merlina? He said, concerned, but then felt someone pulling his shirt. The green-haired guy looked at fingers, who gestured, indicating that it's normal, it happens when she has a vision. Izuku, so if something like this happens, it's when she has a vision, so at the Po Cup, she had a vision. He thought and then held her like a princess. Please don't kill me. Izuku felt a drop. Izuku, fingers, get back on my shoulder, we need to go. He said, and fingers signaled agreed. They started leaving the place. After a few minutes of walking, Merlina didn't wake up, and it started to rain. Izuku, damn it, Merlina, please wake up. He said, worried, hastening his pace. Fingers looked at Izuku, he really liked him and was eager to see how the Adams family would react to him. Izuku stopped when he heard a noise and saw a creature in the distance, which looked at him for a moment. Izuku, look at that luck. He said, and the creature started approaching. Fingers, hold on. He said, activating one for all and starting to run away from the creature. Of all times. Izuku ran through the forest being chased by the monster. Izuku, I have two. He couldn't finish because he felt a slight headache and saw the winged monster next to him. It struck him, unable to defend himself due to holding Merlina, he took the hit, shielding Merlina in the process. The green-haired guy was thrown, hit trees, and a large rock in the process, leaving a crater. Izuku spat out a bit of saliva. Izuku, why you fool? He said, recovering slowly. Merlina. He said, looking at her and stopping the use of the black whips, noticing she was fine as, at the last second, he wrapped her in the black whips to mitigate the damage from the collisions. Good, I'm glad you're okay. He said with a smile. Fingers was surprised by the green-haired guy's resilience, that should have taken him out of the fight, severely injured, nearly dead, or rather, killed instantly. Instead, he was wrapped in black whips, noting the things the green-haired guy destroyed with the hit. Izuku, we have to go. He said, looking at the monster running towards them. See you. He said seriously, activating the smoke screen quirk. In that area, there was a lot of smoke, 
the creature entered that immense amount of smoke, but it was in vain, the green-haired guy wasn't there anymore. With Izuku. We see Izuku resting on a tree away from there, sheltering from the rain, while Merlina was beside him, and Fingers was on his head. Izuku, I think I broke something. He said, stretching and one of his bones cracked. Although I've taken worse hits. He said, watching the rain fall. Merlina began to wake up. Izuku, it's about time. He said with a smile. I'm glad you're okay, Merlina. Merlina was about to say something but looked closely at the green-haired guy. He was lying against the tree, breathing heavily as if he couldn't breathe. Merlina, are you okay? What happened? Izuku, yes, I'm fine, and well, we were chased by that monster. He said annoyed. I couldn't do anything against it. He thought, a bit frustrated for not being able to do anything, although it wasn't the best time to fight to defend Merlina. Merlina was surprised. Merlina, the monster appeared? Izuku, yes, it also attacked us, and well, I had to take the damage to keep you safe. He said, recovering slowly. Merlina, so. Izuku, it must be around here or somewhere. But I'll make sure the next time is different, I'll catch it. Merlina, thank you. Izuku, huh? Merlina, thank you for saving me. She said, and it was evident that it was difficult for her to say that. Although if I were going to die, it would be something creative, killed by a monster. Izuku just laughed. Izuku, no problem. He said, starting to get up. Let's go, it's getting late. Izuku offered her his hand. Merlina looked at him for a moment and accepted. The green-haired guy lifted her. Izuku, by the way, what did you see in the vision you had? Merlina, funny that you ask, I saw the same girl I saw in the vision during the Po Cup. Her name is Goody Adams, and I'm sure she's my ancestor from 400 years ago. Izuku, how can she know that? He thought comically. So what? Merlina, well, you'll see. She said and started walking. Izuku just sighed and began to follow her. Merlina started telling him everything about her investigation and what she plans to do. Izuku was a bit surprised by what she investigates and what she plans to do, although he shouldn't do anything and just enjoy the show. Next day. We see everyone gathered in the square in front of the statue of a great person. There were never again students and civilians, some were recording everything, and the sheriff was there. Izuku was in the stands while Enid talked to him, and it was evident that she missed him, although it was a short time, and he didn't have a bad time. Ajax and Enid talked, but Enid mentioned Izuku a few times, Ajax just sighed and talked with Enid, although he didn't lose hope of confessing to her. Izuku saw Merlina playing an instrument, a violin. Izuku, Enid, if something scares you, just relax, I'm with you. He said, and she nodded confused but slightly blushing since he practically said he would protect her. Everything was normal, but something happened, like a leaf consumed by fire, a small flame appeared, gradually heading towards the statue. No one paid much attention, thinking it was a firework, but then it had a small explosion that alarmed everyone. The statue started burning while everyone was alarmed and started fleeing the place, but Merlina continued playing the violin, adding a special note for her, she only gave a small smile. Izuku was hugged by Enid, she was scared by the sudden explosion. This was the counter side of the plan, but Merlina let it pass. Amid panic and fear, people hurriedly fled the place, although Izuku didn't like it, he just limited himself to leave. Fortunately, no one got hurt. Hours later. We see Izuku lying on his bed while staring at the ceiling. Ajax, that was crazy. Today was amazing. Izuku, no kidding. Ajax, well, I'll let you sleep, you must be tired. He said, lying on his bed. At least I got to talk to Enid. Izuku, no kidding. He said, and then slowly started to fall asleep. It doesn't hurt that much, but it hurts more when someone hugs me suddenly. But that monster. Yesterday on the way, I saw footprints of that creature, but the weirdest thing is. They became more and more human. Could a person be? That creature? He thought, but he would think about that later. Izuku, well, I couldn't read the book. He thought comically. I hope that book. Has something useful. He thought, and then started to sleep. We see fingers infiltrating the morgue, slipping through the ducts and disabling the security cameras. Meanwhile, he approached the back door and opened it, allowing Merlina and Izuku to enter. Izuku, thanks, Fingers. He said with a smile, and Fingers only gestured in response. Merlina, while Izuku and I perform the autopsy, Fingers, search for the monster's victim's files and copy them. She said, 
walking towards where they stored the corpses, with Izuku following. Fingers just gave a slight tap on the floor. Merlina, don't throw a tantrum, you're not good with the scalpel. She said while taking out her tools. Izuku, do you always carry those with you? Merlina, yes. She said, looking at Izuku, any problem? Izuku, not really, just peculiar. He said while examining Merlina's toys. Merlina, going back to you, fingers, do you remember the corpse Uncle Lucas gave me on my 13th birthday? You severed the carotid artery. She said, a bit upset recalling that day. Izuku, she got a corpse as a gift? He thought, blinking several times. Fingers reluctantly went to place his order. Izuku, and remind me why you made me come? I'm sure you can handle it alone. He said with doubt. Merlina, first, you're very smart, with incredible analytical skills. Besides your powers, you can assist me. If not with action, then with information, it can be protection. She said simply, plus, you're the only one I can consider a friend. She said, waiting for a reaction from the green-haired boy. Izuku, oh, I'm glad you consider me a friend. He said, feeling a flutter in his heart but shrugged it off, and although you mentioned something similar in the forest. Merlina, then why ask? She said while looking for the needed cadaver, did it not hurt or something for him to be called a friend? I heard that if it hurts sentimentally, my favorite way, although I prefer it more physically, it means he likes you. Izuku, well, just saying. He said with a chibi face, by the way, have you seen Tyler lately? Merlina, occasionally, as he's helped me with some things, not much, though. She said while searching for the corpse, where could he be? But what a magnificent bruise, she thought and said, by the way, why do you want to know? Izuku, curiosity. Merlina, it's jealousy. She said suddenly. Izuku, huh? He said blankly. Merlina, you're jealous of me being with Tyler, aren't you? Izuku, first, you say it as if you're stating something, and second, no, I said it's curiosity. He said with a slight blush, w why do I feel a flutter in my heart? Now that I think about it, it happened when I saw Enid with my roommate, Ajax. The carriers just laughed at seeing the green-haired boy like this, undoubtedly, he has changed since he came to this world, but they had to return. Merlina, sighs whatever you say. Izuku then gave a small yawn. Merlina, it's not good to be sleepy at times like these. Izuku, you sent fingers to wake me up in the middle of the night. He said and thought, although it doesn't bother me, I've had worse. Merlina, oh, there you are. She said while opening where they stored the corpses, then took out a voice recorder, Thursday, 7.23 p.m., it's the corpse of a 50-year-old man. Izuku, isn't this the same one from the forest? He thought while looking at the corpse, although I think he didn't deserve to die like this, he thought while clenching his fists a bit. Merlina, lacerations and defensive wounds on both hands, what remains of the torso indicates a fierce attack, almost completely eviscerated. She said and then noticed something, oddly, his left foot is missing, it seems like it was bitten off. She said and stopped the recording. Izuku, poor man. Merlina, you're indeed strange, Izuku. She said while examining the corpse. Izuku, it's just that no one deserves to die like this, it bothers me. He said a bit annoyed, I just have to find that monster and stop it quickly. Merlina, by the way, it's been a week since the activities ended. She said and then stored the corpse where it was, and you haven't told me anything about yourself. Izuku, because you haven't asked. He said, and Merlina looked at him seriously. Izuku, although I'm calmer now, I found some information about those symbols. They said that at a certain time, a bright light illuminated an area of the forest. Others investigated and found a cave, but they found nothing. They spent time and returned to that cave, noticing strange symbols, which were not there before. My theory is that these symbols are gradually etched or someone is doing it. If that's the case, I just have to wait for the symbols to return and use them again, thus returning. But the problem is, I don't know how much time it will take for those symbols to come back, he thought with a sigh. Yoichi, at least we know how to return, just have to wait, so relax. Izuku, true, but the problem is the time I'm spending. We don't know what's happening in my world during my absence. N, 9th, they can take care of themselves, at least for a good while, so don't worry too much, we'll just wait. Izuku, alright, but still, I'll continue investigating this. No one knows if I can find a faster way back or speed up the process. Daigoro, although I'm surprised that those symbols we're looking for are there, I'm relieved to find a way. Nana, me too, but the problem is the time. 
although what the first and the sixth said, it's to stay calm. Izuku, guys, wait for me, he thought, but then felt a hit on his shoulder, ow? Merlina, again? Izuku, sorry, I get lost in my thoughts. He said somewhat nervously. Merlina, whatever, let's go, we're done here. Izuku nodded as he saw fingers handing some images to Merlina. Izuku heard footsteps, he picked up Merlina carefully like a princess. When he was about to complain, he couldn't because he saw Izuku activating Ofa, and in less than a minute, they were outside the morgue. Izuku, sighs sorry, some people were coming. He said as he lowered Merlina. Merlina, that was nice. She said, remembering the brief moment she saw her surroundings at an incredible speed, is this how you see the world when you use your power? Izuku, yes, although I only used a small percentage. Merlina, impressive. You could decapitate a person as if it were nothing. She said, making Izuku a bit nervous with that example. Izuku, s something like that, but it would be better to leave here, it's getting late. Izuku and Merlina started walking, with fingers on the green-haired boy's shoulder. Hours later. We see Izuku in Merlina and Enid's dormitory, going through his clues. Izuku, so, these are the victims. He said while looking at the board and tightening his fists a bit. Enid, I Izuku, don't you find it disgusting to see that? Izuku, a bit. He said simply, although I've seen worse. Enid, but Merlina, when I suggested you redecorate your side of the dorm, I didn't mean Ted Bundy's Pinterest. Merlina, it's not as disturbing as your collection of plush unicorns. She said, glancing at her bed, where the teddy bear Izuku gave her was. She gave a small smile. Enid, is that why you sneaked out last night? Merlina, fingers, Izuku, and I went without permission to the morgue to copy the files of the victims of that monster. She said, and Izuku yawned a little. Izuku, I still have a bit of sleep. Merlina, you can sleep for a while in my bed. She said, surprising Enid since she practically forbids anyone from being on her side. Izuku, really? Merlina, sure, but don't mess it up when you wake up. She said a bit coldly, otherwise, you won't wake up anymore. Izuku, you know, I can handle sleep very well. Merlina, good to know. Enid, although what Merlina said disgusts me in so many ways, I don't know where to begin. Merlina, anyway, I need to get into her mind, discover patterns or anomalies. I made a significant discovery. She said and started grabbing the images of the victims, turns out, all the monster's victims have body parts removed. She said, approaching Enid, the first one a kidney, the second one a finger. She said, handing the images one by one. Enid, M. Merlina, I don't feel well. She couldn't finish. Merlina, the third one a gallbladder, and the bearded man at the meeting temple, two fingers. Do you understand what this means? Izuku, I I think you should stop saying that, Merlina. He said, although Merlina ignored that and continued while approaching the board. Merlina, these aren't senseless murders. As a seasoned serial killer, he collects trophies. In fact, it's impressive. She said and turned, noticing Enid in Izuku's arms. Izuku, fingers, bring the scented candles again. He said a bit worried for Enid. Merlina, you can leave her on her bed. She said a bit sternly. Hours later. We see Izuku leaving his plants class. Izuku, this is the class that relaxes me the most, he thought with a smile. Nana, although, did you hear the teacher? A dance is coming. Izuku, I'm surprised you like things like that, Miss Nana. Nana, of course, those were good times, I had many suitors. Daigoro, suitors? Seriously? He said impressed. Nana, well, of course. Daigoro, poor guys. He said and then felt a murderous instinct. Daigoro started running away from an angry Nana. Izuku just had a drop of sweat like the other carriers. Izuku, although I'm not sure if I should go. Izuku was about to walk to continue investigating those symbols more thoroughly, but then he noticed Merlina following Xavier, a classmate. Izuku, hmm, what is she up to? If Merlina is following him, it must be for a reason, he thought as he began to walk in the same direction as her. Minutes of walking, he arrived at a kind of hut, although he got lost midway and lost sight of Merlina. After a few seconds, he found her, he noticed that she was talking to Xavier. Izuku hid behind a tree but started approaching slowly to listen. Xavier, so, why did you come? Merlina, I came to tell you something about the assignment. Xavier, but the teacher didn't assign any homework for the dance. He said and then smiled, is it because you didn't want to go to the dance? 
Merlina looked at him seriously. Xavier, are you going to say it? Merlina, I I wanted if you consider going o out with a see certain person. That if you want to go to the dance with me. She said, and it was evident that it was hard for her to say each word, I wanted to make an effort to say those words to Izuku. I hope this stupidity is worth it. Xavier, I would love to go to the dance with you, Merlina. I thought you would never ask. Merlina started to leave. Merlina, neither did I. She said coldly. Xavier left in a few seconds, but then we noticed the green-haired boy surprised by what he just heard. Daigoro, are you okay, Ninth? Izuku, eh? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. He said as he started to walk away, I think I shouldn't have followed her. I didn't want to hear that. He said, and for some reason, it hurt to see that. He just sighed. Yoichi, cheer up, Ninth. Let's go to the town to distract yourself. Nana, right, cheer up. Ninth. Daigoro, this is true, and you've faced worse things. N, raise that optimism. Haikage, smile, ninth. Izuku just laughed a bit and gave a smile. Izuku, you're right, I've faced worse things. He said with a smile, although I hope she has a good time. He said and continued walking, although. Why did it hurt a bit to hear that? He thought, but he didn't give it much importance. A few hours later. We see Izuku walking through the streets of the town, trying to forget what he heard but couldn't. Suddenly, he felt someone touch his shoulder. Merlina, I knew you'd be around here. Izuku, lucky me, but calm down, don't let this ruin your friendship. I don't want that, I want to be calm. He thought with a sigh, didn't want to see her for a little while, but she appeared anyway. You know me, right? He said, but Merlina didn't respond. Merlina? He said, noticing she was wearing a black dress, her style. Merlina, did you say something? Izuku, nothing. He said while looking at the store. Merlina, well, I have a stop to make, and I want you to come with me. She said, but as Izuku was about to say something, she was already dragging him, and he had a chibi face. A few minutes later. We see Izuku in front of the police station, Merlina told him to wait here. The sheriff shouldn't suspect Izuku, so she left him there to wait. Merlina came out. Izuku, what happened? Merlina, in short, we need more evidence. She said, he just nodded, and they started leaving the place. On the way, Izuku practiced. While he was here, undoubtedly, he was having a good time. He missed this, although he wanted to spend time like this with his classmates, Class 1A. However, when he became a vigilante, loneliness took over. He didn't smile anymore, even though he wanted to smile with them but that had to wait a little longer. In this world, it was entertaining, fun, and very peculiar for Izuku. He had fun and made friends here. Perhaps another feeling, although he was unaware of it. Izuku, so, I have to do something. He said, and then started running in a direction. If you want, you can wait here or follow me. Merlina saw Izuku leaving. Merlina, sigh I'd better wait. She said with a small smile. A few minutes later. We see Izuku returning with a box in his hands, but he noticed that he was putting that box in his bag. Izuku, done. He thought with a smile. As he was about to arrive, he saw Merlina in the distance, so he hurried his pace. Izuku, Merli. He couldn't finish as he saw Tyler with her. Daigoro, is it me, or do you have terrible luck? He said with pity. Yoichi, I thought I was the only one. Izuku just sighed and approached. Merlina, I'm waiting for someone. Tyler. Tyler, who? Merlina, why do you care so much about who it is? Tyler, I don't know, I thought you liked me, thought we liked each other. Merlina, sigh I'm sorry, but it's not like that. Tyler, is it because of Izuku? He said a bit angry. Merlina, don't mention him, okay? She said seriously. Tyler, so it is because of that green-haired guy. He said annoyed. Merlina, drop it, it sounds like a bad soap opera. She said a little annoyed by how he referred to Izuku. Izuku, did I miss something? By the way, hi Tyler, it's been a while. He said while leading them. Tyler looked at Izuku with anger, and Izuku was confused. Izuku, w what's wrong? Tyler, nothing, nothing is happening. Besides, I prefer not to see you anymore. He said and started to leave. Izuku, t Tyler. He said surprised by his response. D did I do something wrong? Merlina, ignore that, Izuku, he's just having his days. She said, 
and Izuku sweated a bit. By the way, why did you take so long? Izuku, I was doing some things, and well, time flew. Merlina, interesting. Izuku, let's go. He said, and she nodded. The two started walking and talking. Merlina, Izuku, do you already have a date for the dance? Izuku, no. He simply said. Merlina, wow, the most popular guy at Never Again Academy doesn't have a date. Izuku, ha ha ha, let's just say the people I wanted to invite. They already have plans. He said, recalling Enid talking to a guy. He saw them as he passed by the cafeteria where Tyler works. He sighed and left, not wanting to interfere. Merlina, I understand. She said, serious. Izuku, and you? Merlina, well. I'm going with Xavier. She said, finding it difficult to admit. Izuku, have fun, seriously. You deserve some days off. He said calmly. Merlina, my days off involve writing my novel and investigating the monster case. She said calmly. Izuku, by the way, you haven't given me your novel to read. He said excitedly. Merlina, really? She said surprised, I thought you said that out of politeness last time. Izuku, no, I really want to read it. Merlina, how about I give you a small part to read later? Izuku, sounds good, I can't wait. A few hours later. We see Izuku lying in his dorm reading a letter from Merlina sent by Dedos, who is on his shoulder. Izuku, so, Merlina went to some kind of cave with Eugene, maybe it's the monster's lair. But why didn't she tell me? Dedos signals something. Izuku, so she didn't want to depend on me, and she wanted me to rest. He said, smiling, I'm glad she cares about me. He said amused, although if she were here, she'd give me a death stare for saying that. He said comically. Dedos agrees. Izuku, but wasn't she supposed to dance with Xavier? Dedos signals again. Izuku, so she made up the dance, but is he a suspect? It makes sense, he was hiding something around his neck. Dedos makes more signals. Izuku, what? Invite Merlina to the dance? Dedos gives a thumbs up. Izuku, no, no, no. Dedos signals why not? Izuku, well, maybe she won't accept, and I don't want that. Dedos signals is that serious? She obviously wants to go with you. Izuku, obvious? Dedos signals well, in her own way, but it was different. Izuku, I guess you're right. Dedos signals so? Izuku, I I think I'll invite her. Dedos cheers and is about to leave, but Izuku calls him. Izuku, Dedos. He said, and Dedos stopped, can you give this to Merlina with this note? He said, and Dedos looked at the box but only signaled of course, thanks. He said and gave it to him, handle with care. Then, Dedos left, leaving Izuku alone in his dorm since Ajax went to find his date. Izuku, sighs. N, are you really going to invite Merlina to the dance? Izuku, I don't know. It's the first time I'm doing this. In my school days, I never went to things like these. The carriers knew why, as the core of Ofa, they were attentive to his life, so they didn't ask to avoid bringing up those memories. Izuku, I feel like I'll be disappointed, but it's my own issue. He said, starting to get ready, why am I even doing this? This is a waste of time. Yoichi, Izuku, enjoy and have fun. Take advantage of what you couldn't before, so smile and have a good time. Maybe you'll have a good time. He said, and the green-haired guy just smiled. Minutes later. We see Izuku walking to Merlina's dorm, planning to ask her to the dance. He sighed, almost reaching her dorm when Tyler appeared. Tyler, M. Merlina. He said, seeing Merlina at her dorm door. Merlina, Tyler, what are you doing here? She said, and Izuku noticed she was dressed for exploration, giving him an idea of where she might be going. Tyler, I came to ask if you wanted to go to the dance with me. I heard about it, so here I am, he he he. Merlina, Tyler, I told you that, she was interrupted. Tyler, come on, okay? It's just a dance. He said, and she sighed. Merlina, if I say yes, will you drop this? She said, and he nodded, fine. She said, and he smiled. Tyler, so, should I wait for you to change or wh, he was interrupted as Merlina closed the door. Izuku witnessed all of this with a smile. He sighed and left without making any noise. All, ninth. Izuku left the dorm and walked through the academy in the middle of the night. Izuku, I knew this was a waste of time. Minutes later.
we see Izuku sitting on the roof of the academy while looking at the stars. Izuku, at least I hope she likes what I bought for her. He said with a smile. Daigoro, seriously, you always look at the positive side of things, huh? Izuku, it's not worth being depressed all the time. That's in the past. What I want now is for her to have fun. He said calmly, and I hope Enid has a good time, she looked very happy. Carriers, 9th, we know it's not like that. You're holding back from crying or just ignoring and not letting it out, he thought, concerned for the green-haired guy. Nana, although it was clear she went with that guy to make you jealous, 9th. Izuku, huh? Nana, seriously, you guys don't understand. She said with a smile. Izuku slash carriers, us? Suddenly, he felt a slight headache. He got up quickly, and the danger sensor alerted him that something was happening in the direction of the dance. He quickly went there, and upon arrival, he noticed a truck with two guys putting a hose in an area. Izuku noticed it was to put out the fires. Izuku, hey, what are you doing? Person 2, huh? Is that you? Izuku, me? Wait, I recognize you. Weren't you part of those folks dressed as pilgrims? He asked with uncertainty. Person 3, back off. Izuku, sighs this won't work. It's better if you leave. Seems like you're here to spoil the dance, right? I don't want trouble, so you can go. And I won't forget seeing you around. He said, irritated. Person 3 pulled out an object, making Person 2 nervous. Izuku was surprised but kept a serious demeanor. Person 2, hey, that's going a bit too far, even for us. Person 3, quiet. This green-haired guy will pay for embarrassing me. He said, aiming at Izuku. Izuku, he's trying to scare me. That object probably doesn't pose a real threat, he thought while observing the guy handling the object. He just wanted to intimidate him, and his danger sense didn't signal any imminent danger, lower the object, okay? I'm not in the mood for this. Person 3, shut up. I'll use this, and, he got interrupted. Izuku took a bold step, startling both individuals. Izuku, size please, you don't want to see me in a bad mood. Person 3, I'll take you down. You're just a useless piece of. Izuku opened his eyes wide. The phrase useless piece triggered memories he wanted to forget, the mistreatment, insults, and harassment. He relived those moments in an instant. Izuku lowered his head, covering his face with his hair. Person 3 approached him. Person 2, I I think you really scared him. Person 3, that's what I thought. He's just useless. He said, pushing him, causing him to fall to the ground. Daigoro, 9th. Nana, calm down. Person 3, get out of here. He couldn't finish his sentence as he felt a strong instinct. He looked scared, witnessing an aura surrounding Izuku. Izuku slowly stood up. Izuku, leave. He gestured with his hand, and although Person 3 was trembling, he pointed an object at Izuku. Izuku, drop the act. It's not funny. Are you trying to fool me? Idiot. He said, swiftly disarming the individual, I'll say it once more. He said, squeezing his hand where the object was, breaking it, get out of here, now. He said coldly. Person 3, W we won't leave. We were going to do something in this strange place for phenomena, but you ruined it, and. Person 3 couldn't finish his sentence as he received a blow to the stomach, causing him to spit saliva and a bit of blood. Person 3, P phenomenon. He said, falling unconscious. Izuku watched this with a cold expression, then turned to Person 2. Person 2 was frozen in fear, and his fear heightened as Izuku locked eyes with him. Izuku, if you're smart, you'll leave with this pathetic guy, right? He said, and Person 2 didn't respond, no? He said, and Person 2 nodded quickly, helping Person 3 into the truck, and they drove away. Izuku watched as the truck left. He tried to calm himself, needing an outlet, but he couldn't find a way. Izuku, darn it. He shouted, and a few tears started to fall, why? 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 Why do those memories come back? Why did they make me remember? The carriers didn't say anything, they were silent, witnessing the scene. Izuku, nothing goes well. He said but took a breath and remembered today, nothing is going well. He said, remembering how he arrived in this world, nothing. He said, recalling how he fought against his classmates, Lady Nagant, who couldn't do anything, and the war where his loved ones died and were hurt. Then he jumped and landed on the roof, realizing someone was about to come out. It was the guy who went to the dance with Enid, he just peeked out. Person 1, 
Where are they? Well, I'm glad they didn't do it. I'm really having fun. He said, looking at his phone, although Enid talks a lot about this Izuku guy. I think he's the green-haired one who humiliated my friend. He said, dialing a number, seriously. Enid likes that guy. Although I'm glad to meet her, she can be a great friend. He said, and they answered his call, hello? He said and heard a person shouting that they couldn't because a certain person appeared, wait, can you explain calmly? He said and continued with what he was doing. Izuku just heard that with a small smile. After a short while, he returned to the dance. Izuku came down from the roof and just listened to the music where the dance was happening. He looked for a moment. Izuku, I wish. I were there, having fun, laughing. Just having a good time with people I like and appreciate. He said, wiping away his tears, I wish. He said inside, I hope you're having a good time. Merlina. Enid. He said, and then started to leave. Izuku, maybe it's karma, and if it is, why me? I don't know. And if so, why does karma only go after the person trying to do good, while the person with power can do anything without fear, he thought as he walked aimlessly, he just wanted to clear his mind, even though he felt a bit better because of what that guy said about Enid, it cheered him up a bit.